everybody, Josh here from Alien 3D, and it is time to do a tutorial video for the October 2019 UFO project. Um, this project I came up with on my own. Um, I saw a light up sword on Twitter, and I thought it was cool, so I figured I'd do a light up dagger. If I had to do it over, there's some things different I would do, but uh, as of right now, it works. On off switch, cycle button, glowing blade. And this is how you do it. Alright, so <clears throat> we need some parts, and this full list of parts I will put underneath the video. And they all came in the UFO. Let's get those out of the way. And the first thing we're going to start off with is the Neo Pixel board. You will need three wires for this part. I am such a pro at soldering. You guys did not want to see it. So I went ahead and did it before the video. And as you can see, there's an input, a power, and a ground. Those are the only three wires you're really going to need, even though there's an output and another ground but those are mainly two jumping to other boards we're gonna cut one of these wires this is the ground wire and the reason we're gonna cut this is because we technically need three grounds however the Arduino I believe only has two so what we're going to do is jumper these, marry these, whatever. Two wires between the momentary button and the NeoPixel board. So we'll just strip these wires out. And then the green female end is going to eventually just get cut off. Uh, I believe this part gets cut off. And then we need another female end, which is the blue, that is going to the Arduino that will plug into the ground. So we'll just strip the end off of that magic. Now we're going to twist all three of these together. And I will explain my color coordinating here in a second. Let's get these together and then... Initially, I just kind of held them together and then uh, used electrical wire on them. But they came apart, so I figured soldering them would be a bit better hold. And I know how much you guys love watching me solder. So I'm going to skip around and speed up. And you guys can laugh at me in fast motion on how wonderful my soldering job is. We'll get that taped up. And now this green is going to go to the momentary button. But we need to stick the momentary button into the handle first. Otherwise, we will have some issues as the wires would not fit right. So we'll get the handle and it has a button cut out for it. And the button should be able to just push through. And then we'll grab the nut. Hold that on there. And it's easier to just screw from the outside than it is for the inside and to hold the nut in place. It should only couple, take a couple turns. And I'm going to make the wires go left to right instead of up and down. And then we're going to solder the green wire to one of the pins on the momentary button. It doesn't really matter which one. Then we are going to grab 
grab the other end of the green wire with the female end on it and we're going to solder that to the other pin yes yes amazing soldering job don't y'all wish your soldering was just like mine De -de 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 -de. yay so now we got those two together half of our electronic work is now done then we'll grab the little on off switch now this on off switch may not be the same type that you guys get in your UFOs this is what I had on hand and what I'm ordering for the UFOs is still on order but should theoretically be the same concept we're going to take the 9 volt battery pack or battery clip and then we are going to take the red wire which is the positive and we're going to solder that to one of the sides I really 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 need more hands but eventually I get it done to perfection y'all know and then we're gonna take another wire and this is going to be a female side because this is gonna plug into the Arduino and we're going to basically solder that to the part that closes the connection once the switch is on in this case it is the middle pin on this on off switch again another perfect solder so then we are going to take another female wire and we are going to attach it to the black that is on the battery clip and We'll solder that together just for the extra strength. And we'll toss some electrical tape around it. Or if you guys have heat shrink, that'll work too. Now we'll grab our Arduino. And we're going to power this thing with a 9 volt battery. Now Arduino Nanos can generally, supposedly, take up to 20 volts. However, it's recommended 7 to 12 and what we're looking for first is the VIN pin, V-I-N. And if you see focus there, it is in the top right corner, the very first pin up there. And we're going to want to stick the positive end of the battery, which is coming off of the power switch. And we're going to move in slow motion for some reason. We don't know why. But we're going to plug it into the VIN pin. Then we're going to take the black wire coming off of the 9 volt battery pack. And we're going to stick that onto the ground pin, which is right next to the VIN pin. How convenient. Well, basically, we just need to plug a whole bunch of wires in now. And at this point, I got a tidbit confused. I was looking for the signal wire, and I'm like, um, I'm missing a wire. Uh, I'm missing a wire. Oh, I think I see it. Somewhere? Nope. Um, yeah. Oh, here you are. Duh. Yeah, I don't know what was going on through my mind at that moment in time, but there we were so basically we're going to take this pin and we're going to need a signal pin let me focus here right quick so you can see the pin numbers a little wee bit better now there are a whole bunch of digital and analog pins in here we really only need Two. So we're going to take the signal wire off of the NeoPixel board and shove it into pin 6. Why pin 6? It doesn't matter. That's just how it's programmed. 
and then we're going to take the female off of the momentary button and we're going to put that on pin 5. And then we're going to take our shared ground that connects the NeoPixel board and the momentary button and we're going to found the other find the other ground wire which is on the same side as the digital pins and we will follow that up to the pin and boom now we just need to plug this and this is the power 5 volt going to the neo pixel board and the 5 volt pin is on the same side as the bin and ground it's like the fifth pin on the end at this point I uh, forgot which pin it was so I had to find it again and put it together. And that is all the wiring we really need to do for this project. So then we're going to take the 9 volt battery and plug it in just so we can test the Arduino and as you guys as y'all can see, as soon as you turn it on, it does the default blinker Arduino code that's on every Arduino that you buy. Test an on-off switch and disconnect the battery. Now it's time for the breakdown. We're going to plug the USB power slash programming cord into the Arduino. It might help if it's facing the right direction. And we'll get that plugged in. Boom. Now let's switch to Arduino code. Now I just downloaded the latest Arduino and it worked fine so you shouldn't have a problem uh, what we want to do is go to the libraries though and for some reason at this point I type really slow I don't know why but we're gonna look for NeoPixel and once you finally type a little faster than I did find the NeoPixel you want to go down to the Adafruit and as you can see I already have it installed uh, but you just click the install button it adds it to the Arduino libraries you open up the dagger code that I will provide to you you should uh, download it on the reveal page this top one is pin 6 and then pin 5 those are representing the momentary button pin and the NeoPixel this code here instructs you on how to fill out that portion which is the uh, NeoPixel code and then here we have where this digital write and pin mode it tells the momentary button pin that it's going to be input and high and then as you press down the pin the momentary button it'll make it low which is what we're going to look for. This is the loop. This is where it performs all the code over and over and over again. This first part, part we're going to get whether the button is high or low. If it's low, we're going to increment the counter. Since we only have eight counters programmed, once it's above eight, we're going to reset it back to zero. Now the switch down here takes a case-by-case -case basis of the counter and these are all the pre-programmed color swapping parts now the colors up here is what color it's going to change all the pixels um, and the wipe do does all the lights and it uses RGB values 0 through 255 so you can come in here and Put whatever RGB colors you want, purples, blues, greens, whites, blah, blah, blah. And then this number here is the speed at which it performs between each 
uh, each light. And then down here we've only got 20. Like I said, it basically sets how fast the lights change. And then these are all the different programs to handle, or I'm sorry, the different functions to handle the, the rainbows, the flashes, setting the colors and whatnot. And then up here at Tools, we want to choose the Arduino Nano. And then you want to go to the processor. I use the P, 328P, with the old bootload. And then you want to pick the COM port that your Arduino's in. Once that's done, send it to the Arduino. And once that is done uploading, you'll see in the status bar there it's done uploading. And then we can go back and see what's going on with our lights. And from the looks of it, the light's not blinking on the Arduino, and boom, NeoPixel Heaven. Now, since the default is set to zero and K0 makes it red, as you can see, all the lights are red. I'm going to darken the video a little bit so you can see a little bit better. Still got some glow, but it'll be all right. And then you'll see as I push the momentary button, it'll change between the different cycles. One thing I noticed, and I currently, as I make this video, do not know how to fix, but I will look into it and fix it before the code is uploaded. But on the long cycles, um, like doing the rainbows it's switching, you have to actually hold the momentary button down to switch to the next cycle um, until it switches to the next cycle, otherwise just the one instant single push doesn't do it because it's still processing the code from like the rainbow versus uh, being interrupted so I have to figure out how to interrupt the function to instantly switch between each one But I think it's pretty cool. It's working. And now we get to really go work on the fun, fun, fun parts. Um, apparently I want to play with some lights some more before I switch it. And if y'all can't tell, I recorded the entire tutorial video silently. and was kind of talking in my head as I did it. And then... Um, now I am currently recording the audio as I watch this video back. So my timing may be a little off. I'm trying to guesstimate where I'm going next. <laughs> but I think the lighting is working pretty good. And apparently I'm stuck on the lighting still. I don't remember why I'm stuck on the lighting still. You could probably fast forward a couple seconds. Uh, there we go. Um, it, it switched back to red. Basically, I was waiting for the cycle to finish, so the button push gets registered. And now, I do believe, while we stare at this red light, because red light is amazing, and I probably should have added this part of the video a little more to cut staring at red light out. Um, I'm hypnotizing you guys right now, and so y'all don't notice that you're secretly being probed. If you're not signed up for the UFO box, sign up. Oh, here we go. We're, we're finally back. So we're going to take off the programming USB cord and hook up the 9 volt battery. That way we can make sure that the battery is powering and the code is still working. And yes, we see the red light again. And it is switching colors. 
so it works, which is still super cool. Apparently, I'm not going to show you a bunch of light again, which is probably a good thing because you're probably bored of seeing a red light. We'll switch it off here for a second. <clears throat> We're going to turn it back on in another second. But the power switch here, there's a square piece of the cover. And I do believe the on-off switches that I ordered will fit in here fine. But I don't know if the bolt patterns are going to be the same. So in this one during the video, there are no bolt holes to screw the on-off switch and mount it into the inside. But... I also made it a little difficult to turn it on and off. You actually have to push hard or use a fingernail or something. That way it's not being accidentally turned off by your child. If your child was going to use it for Halloween, that would be super awesome. I want pictures if so. Um, but if you see here the holes, I'm going to put holes there. Now this is the disc that is going to hold the NeoPixels and that the optic fibers get pushed into. And as you can see there are nine holes, though there are only seven fiber optic cables that are going to be used. And this is so you can mount the NeoPixel board to it. And I don't exactly know how big the screws, bolts, whatever you use are. Um, I measured it and it was 1.85. Um, the holes that I created were uh, 1.5, I believe. Um, so whatever will fit through the board should be good. And now that is mounted, we're going to let this sink down because I don't know what I was doing at the moment. Probably texting Rosa, who knows. And now we get to the super, super fun part. These pieces here are going to be used to hold the fiber optics and wind the fiber optics around. You should have three meters of fiber optics by the time I got done doing this project, I had about half a meter or so remaining. Uh, so you could probably actually do closer to nine inches on this next part. Um, but right here, I measured out around approximately eight inches. Um, I only have a six inch actual ruler on that part. So I'm just guesstimating. Guesstimating is what we do as makers, right? Especially me. I never do anything accurate. Uh, so basically what we're going to do, and if I remember correctly, I kind of mess up at this point. But you'll see that there are holes at the top and there's a bottom hole. So one's an exit and one's an entry. The one's on the left are the exit and the ones on the right are the entry so we're going to push the fiber optic cable through the entry hole and we're going to measure it back out to the eight inches And right here in a minute, I'm going to cut the zip tie off of the fiber optics because it was just in the way. I suggest doing that. But we want to make sure there's 8 to 9 inches coming out of the hole there. And at that point is when I cut the cord. And then there was a big tangly mess and I had to untangle it. <laughs> so eight to nine inches doesn't have to be exact and then we want to pull it down the center and go about an inch inch and a half or so past the bottom and this is because we're going to want to push some of the fiber optics down into the ring 
so I'm you're gonna kind of want good cuts on this because it is light and a crappy cut will probably block some of the light going through so I use the PTFE cutters that I have and you know just for monotony sake we're gonna measure it again um, actually this is the next hole and we're gonna go down to the next and measure out eight to nine inches and then go down the center about an inch or so pull it out and cut that one and about this time I should be fast forwarding <laughs> wait for it wait for it go down to the next hole and start measuring and we're just gonna do the same thing all the way down the shaft <clears throat> and really I think there's probably only an inch difference between each fiber optic level so you could probably just you know measure the first one and then go an inch shorter on each other one um, but what I mean whatever floats your boat and I also suggest having them separated between the long and the short ones so you didn't have to do what I do and go back and figure out which ones were the longer ones and separate them again um, but just to show you what it looks like and the tip is also super bright so here in a minute I'm going to start to show you how to do something one way but then tell you and show you how to do it a different way on a part um, but this is side glow fiber optics and should work rather well so this is the point where we're going to start wrapping the fiber optics around the shaft. My idea was that using side glow fiber optics, it would glow all the way up the little loop. Um, this is something I would change and do different if, uh, if I did this project again. Um, I would probably use NeoPixel strips instead of the fiber optics. Because as you saw, as the light gets further and further away, it gets dimmer and dimmer. On top of that, if you kink the fiber optics, which this shouldn't because the holes that I put in there are uh, at an angle, so it shouldn't kink them. But it still dims a lot by the time you're reaching the end. And uh, so <clears throat> get all your fiber optics through. Um, pull the fibers down the center and try to get them all so that when you put the second half on it's not gonna push out the side and then also have a couple pieces of like electrical tape or something handy um, that way once you get all the fiber optics in there you can grab a piece of tape and just kind of hold it Hold the two sides together while you're doing the rest of this part. That helped quite a bit. And I put one down at the bottom and one at the top. Now initially, the reason I only put half of the electrical tape on the tip there is because I didn't want to cover that hole. Um, but the entry holes there are now irrelevant with the new way that I'm about to tell you how to do this. Uh, those holes aren't actually needed anymore. Now in the first wrapping I'm going to show you, you wrap it around a good six or seven times. And it may be kinking the fiber optics a little bit. Um, so it's theoretically this shaft could be made a little better. Now right here, this is the wrong way to do it. So do not do it this way. Um, you can still do it this way if you don't want to do it the optional way. But the holes were 
basically put there to hold the ends <clears throat> and the whole rest of this process is the same just wrapping it around and poking it in um, but when I got down to this part I thought hmm the end of the fiber optic actually emits light as well and actually pretty brightly so instead of sticking the ends in the holes get like a thin piece of electrical tape and wrap it around and hold it and then let the tip of the fiber optic be outside of the tape so it can shine out too and add additional light while you're working with the uh, the dagger so that it can just make it brighter um, so once you get everything done as you can see I didn't think of that idea until I was almost done so but I wasn't gonna go back and redo it all but as you can see the more you push the fiber optic into the lights the closer they are to the lights the brighter they are so you're gonna want to push all of these in and if you've got fat fingers you might want to use some tweezers um, these were a little bit too long and they were putting too much pressure and not folding right so I cut them down a bit so they were more also more even and then you just want to stick a different fiber optic into a hole and take one of them and go through the holes and just measure to make sure all the fiber optics go into the holes easily if they don't then I just took my tweezers and kind of poked the holes and made them a little bigger um, <clears throat> mainly I think it was just my bottom layer was smushed and in the way make sure they're all pushed down as far as possible and then wiggle it around a little bit just so you can get that extra little push that one fiber there probably could have went a little deeper but it's working and you want to push these two pieces together and then these two parts are designed to fit between this fitting here um, <clears throat> At this point I realized that the electronics were on the other side so it would probably be easier to take it out of this side and put it into the other part of the handle which it was and both sides of the handle have the same fitting there so you should be able to just push it in and it's got a little bit of lip there so it'll hold it in place and keep the two pieces together at this point it is really just shoving all the wires in um, I put the 9 volt battery in first I don't know why it's not on camera I thought I had it uh, then I pushed the Arduino down all the way on one side and then I just snugged the wires in the best I could and everything fit rather beautifully and then we're gonna start taking pieces well, let me show off some lighting changes first. And as also, as you can see, some colors are brighter and shine up higher on the fiber optics than others. Um, but if you see the couple uh, ends there are still super bright. So like I said, I, I think it's a better idea to have the ends out like that. and then from here all we need to do is put parts together I decided this bottom screw here would probably hold things together a little easier while I'm putting the rest of it together and this I believe the handle is 36 millimeters wide um, this bolt that I'm using is not a full 36 millimeters but I put it through enough to where it will hold both sides together now this top part I think it's important to put this top bolt in if the guards break or separate from the part that holds the blade on uh, then your blade could fall off because the blade actually 
bolts onto these additional parts up here. That's what those holes for the on the edges of them are for. So get those in, and then we'll take one. This one's probably about a M320, uh, M316, M318, around there-ish. Um, I apologize, I didn't measure all the bolts. Uh, but we just want to stick all the bolts through here, hold parts together, all kinds of fun stuff. I am really trying to go as fast as I possibly can. As you can see, I'm in turbo speed. I bet you didn't know aliens could move this fast. And uh, I apologize, this video is kind of monotonous and boring, but I just really wanted you guys to see how to put this thing together if you guys had any questions. I will also do a write-up to hopefully make it a little better as well. We shall see. Um, I know some people are a little more visual, so figured I'd make a video. Now we're going to put the blades in. And each side of the blade has two holes in it that will screw into the ring at the top. And once we get this started, we're going to hit back to Alien Turbo Mode. Oh yeah. Lots of screwing going on. Y'all shut your dirty minds. I was talking about the bolt screwing into the parts. Now, once you get all of these bolts screwed in, you'll start to notice that the top of the blade is separating a bit. Um, I didn't really want to put another bolt at the top of the blade. because I didn't think it would actually look up like a blade that way. So, what I instead suggest is to use some kind of adhesive. And as y'all know, there is one adhesive that I've used quite a bit of, and that is the wonderful PLA 3D Gloop. This stuff is amazing for holding PLA together. So I'm just going to grab a little bit on a brush, and I'm going to put it on the end once I finally decide to actually get the brush and put it on there. There we go. And we're going to put some gloop on the flat parts that are up there at the tip of the blade. Hold it together. And wait for it. In three, two, one. I did not guess that right. Here's another second. And this is the final dagger. And it's not the best. But it works. It lights up. It changes colors. It does all sort of amazing. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys like it. I hope your kids like it. Uh, family members, grandkids, yourself. I don't know, whoever... You may make this for, um, again, it's not the perfect solution. I think some NeoPixel strips going up the center would have worked a bit better. But in the dark, it's, it's still pretty bright. Um, so I like it, and I hope you guys do too. And I hope anybody watching signs up for the 3D Monthly UFO Box. Peace out.